Welcome to Ear Biscuits, the podcast where two lifelong friends talk about life for a long time. I'm Rhett. And I'm Link. This week at the round table of dim lighting, we're going to have a really fun and upbeat conversation about famous last words. Words that famous people uttered right before they died or the last words heard before they died. And maybe in but the it's going to be fun. In the process, we can prepare. Oh yeah! In case we ever, prepare our remarks, in case we can anticipate it, we can anticipate uh, our own deaths. We'll know what to say, well, so that we can be on internet lists someday, which is really the goal: leave yeah. a legacy. That be, type being of a legacy. mental floss article after you die, a list legacy. You know, the first thing I thought when you said we should prepare right now was, okay, well, I know what my last words are gonna be. It's gonna be, I can't remember what I was gonna say. Well, that's real, please don't let that happen. <laughs> yeah, because I'll prepare it, and then I just, I won't be able to remember. Maybe you should script it. Maybe I should tattoo it on my, written in a... on like my palm so I can read it. Uh, or, just, the... or just write it every time I get out of the shower. Yeah, it might be overkill. It's It'd really be a good reminder. Today could be the day. Write what your last words are on your hand. You know, speaking of today could be the day, uh, we were before we talk about that morbid subject. Let's talk about another morbid subject. But can we keep it upbeat? Oh, it's good. The whole thing's going to be upbeat. Okay, good. Uh, we have a friend who has a very, very cute dog. Uh, I mean, such a tiny little Chihuahua that's so tiny that it's like, how does this thing like? How does its heart beat? You know what I'm saying? It's like it's so small. You're, right. I'm always afraid to touch it, that I'm going to step on it. Mm -hmm. It's a chihuahua that has the patterns of a cow. And it's smaller than your foot. Yes. So Wonderful if you stepped dog. on it, you would lose it under your foot. And we love this dog. Uh, the thing is, is we, you know. You can carry it around in your pocket. When it's we were so hanging cute. out with our friend, we were like, you know, you really have like the perfect candidate for a TikTok dog. But then I immediately said, I shouldn't have said that, and you do not want to be someone who owns a TikTok dog. But I said, I know you got all this cute footage of your dog. It doesn't work that way. You can't just take old footage. Gogi. His name is Gogi. You, you have to take... Here's what I said. I said, send me all the footage, and I'll just create the account. No, you won't. You don't even check your email. And then... That's true. And then I will, like, I'll slowly You're disseminate start a TikTok account. this footage. It's not time stamped. You don't even have your own. <laughs> so what? I was like, you know what, Rhett, you're right, but what I'm saying is a good way to get around that. Just give your footage to somebody else, and then you don't have to be the one to do it. But the main problem you were pointing out was... There is a very high chance that you are going to outlive your famous TikTok dog, and then you're going to come on there and show your human face crying about the, your famous dog that died. Because it's on the account, everybody follows, they want to see another picture of the dog, and then you got to come on and say, guys, it's over. And here's the thing, I, just like Yelp reviews, I am a taker, a receiver, not a giver, whatever, the, you know, I, I use them, but I don't give them. Yeah, you're I a, enjoy pet TikTok accounts. You're the, a bottom, I think is what it's the called. The more creative, <laughs> the better. But the issue is, is that I don't want to put, first of all, I don't have time. I, but I, if I did have time and I had a dog that I thought was a candidate for a TikTok account, which I'm not sure I do, I, you, well, I would not, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I want to enjoy these, can, but I don't want to sign up for it because you know they're going to die. They're going to die before you, man. And then you, you well, have to make that video. As a side note, before I talk about the video, I will say that out of all of our dogs, all four of them, I think Barbara is the only one that's like uh, feed material. Like you, it all depends all of on our, what you. All of our dogs are postable, but like to have like a following and a consist like a consistent performance mentality. Mm. Like Jade doesn't have patience for that. Jasper only wants to go on a walk. And Sean will bite you. So I mean, well, uh, then you're no, left with yeah, Barbara. I, maybe you're not as who as, likes to perform as thorough as thorough of a student as I am of these accounts because there's several ways you can take it. Yes, if it is about the dog doing cool stuff, 
Barbara is the only candidate. No, However, I'm, I'm thinking just like cute posed photos. Can you get those out of Sean? Uh, yeah, listen, if we when we go on a walk, everyone stops us and talks about Sean. He has he has the whole side of one, his whole side of his face is black. So you and then the other side mm. is white. So many people look at it and he's got this derpy look that people just love at, in pets. Okay. There so you go. Maybe it's we, Sean then. If we were to put Sean in Outfits and just pose him in different places. Will he wear an outfit? Like Sean in Paris. Yeah. Um, he will wear an outfit. What's he going? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't ask him. We just put it on him. And he doesn't start acting like, oh my gosh, what's wrong? No, he just acts as he acts as if there's nothing that has happened to him. He just, put, I mean, we did that thing where we put the flannel shirts on me and Jesse and Barbara and Sean, and they were all fine. And we got by far the best pictures of Sean. Okay, well, Sean's your one. But I don't want to do that. But that raises the slightly related question, which is just because we don't have TikTok accounts dedicated to our animals doesn't mean that we're not going to have to make that video, that inevitable video when they die. We're talking about our dogs right now. I think we are going to have to, like, let people know. Well, of course we're going to let them know, but, like, are you going to devote a whole episode of this podcast to it? Are you going to talk about it on Good Mythical Morning? Or is it just make a more, you know? Like, how do you, how do you, what do you do? What do you do with these dogs that are going to die and leave a hole in our hearts? I mean, just this morning I was watching Jon Stewart talk about his uh, three-legged pit bull that died, and he was a crying mess, as you would expect. I watched the beginning of that video... And then I I kept going because I didn't actually see the dog. I just saw him. And he wasn't crying at the beginning. Well, yeah, he tried to get, he tried. He, he tried to, he was at the desk, right? Well, yeah, he, he thought he was going to, and like literally when he sa said, Brindle Pitbull, he just, like, he was like, he brought out the tissues and then he just couldn't do it. I mean, oh that's gosh. what will happen. I know. And the, I'm, yes, we're going to mention it. Yes, we're going to talk about it. Yes, I'm sure inevitably we will cry. But my question is, you know, I think we, I think we probably did a whole episode on uh, Jade, right? Because uh, she was the first dog. We did a whole more on Jade, that's for sure. I'm sure. I mean, listen, man. I just, you we're know, we're about to just read the last words of famous people. We'll do anything for an episode. That's true. And so, I, and there'll be so it. It'll be there'll be so much bereavement, and it'll be such a grieving process that I think it's something that we'll probably want to process here. So I think it will happen. Even though my initial answer I thought was going to be, I'm just going to put up like text, make a text post that says, "Please respect the family in this time of grief," and you know, just like stay out of it, just not get into it. I th I don't think it can, it definitely can't be fresh. Well, it do, it does raise this question about what it what is fodder for content, right? I mean, I hate to say this, I, and I don't know. Maybe this is why these last words were on my mind. I, I mean, I know Jamie put this as in, in the in the document, but maybe the reason my mind was drawn to it is because of this John Stewart video. But also, the first TikTok I saw this morning was a man in t just losing his shit over the fact that his daughter had just died. Oh, gosh, Rhett, why? Uh, that just uh, came up on your feed? This <laughs> this stuff happens, man. It happens. And what I'm, what I'm saying is that I was like, I can't watch this. And, like, I think it literally just happened, and the first thing that he did was make a TikTok. That's, that's, and, 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 I don't, and, I don't, and I, I don't and, quite get it. And, and, and you know, I mean, obviously he's not thinking straight, you know, it's like you're in the middle of this grieving process, but it just made me think like, wow, what an interesting world we live in that, the, and it was literally like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do with this grief, so I'm going to make a TikTok. Well, maybe... Maybe he got some help as a result. And maybe of it. he did, and I'm sure it's like okay, you end up when you put something. It wasn't out in the a world, money grab. It was. It was. A, no, it, it was a legitimate, like, processing of emotion. Maybe a cry for help here. Well, and the thing is, is that 
lots of people ask us, like, why do you guys talk about fill in the blank? Why do you guys talk so much about your deconstruction? Why do you talk? Why do you talk about your sex lives every September? Like, can't isn't anything sacred or whatever? Is everything just content? Are you just just trying to stir the pot and get views? That's a good question. Uh, and the and the the honest answer to that is, well, once you create an outlet, once you create an outlet whereby which you are sharing your thoughts on things. The things that rise to the surface are going to be the things that are the most significant, the most impactful, and you just end up talking about them. But it just creates this weird thing because you're making content that is part of a business model. Yeah. And so now, the th and I always say that, it's actually one of the things that has... Yeah, I, you know, I'm still working on my anti-anxiety mantra, but one of the elements of it at this point, it's not, it's less, of, as you said, it's, it's, it's a mantra that has multiple pieces that I could say any one piece at any time, depending on the situation. Okay. So I guess it's multiple mantras. Maybe sometimes I will say the whole thing. But one part of it is what will be, will be, and will be, a good story. Hmm. Um, yeah, it seems like there, I, there I get be a dark side to that. Because I get a little anxious about the future from time to time. And when I find myself entering into a situation where things could go sideways, yeah, I think to myself, like even... Having a podcast feels like it redeems it. There's a silver lining to like, man, this is crappy, but I can talk about it on the podcast. Right. The content catch twenty two. I don't think that that has the ring of health to it. That like this is really crappy, but it's an opportunity for me to grow. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's quite as healthy as that. I wasn't really thinking about our podcast when I said it will be a good story, but I think about how much of my life is based in story. You know, in one sense, my career is based around telling stories, and I love telling stories. And you spend a lot more time processing the story of the event than you do the event itself. And these stories connect people. They give you something to talk with about other people. It is a way to, like, process and explore. So when I find myself heading into a potentially dangerous situation, uncertain situation, the what will be will be and will be, or could be, really, a good story. It's not always a good story. Uh, does give me this thing that, like, yeah, I could go through something really, really crazy, but on the other end of it, I've got an experience that shapes me, but also I can share as part of the process. As long as your dog doesn't die in the process. Well, then you've got two stories. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, the, the, the guy who told me it's better to have a good story than a good time was not a podcaster. Was that Abraham Lincoln? It was just a guy who, he was an older guy that, like, I respected, and it was like he was, I remember him telling me this, like, on the precipice of me moving out to L.A. for everything that we were going after. Okay. And we, we didn't start a podcast for, you know, years after that. So um, it was it was something that he had adopted as kind of like a mindset of, well, I would say it's a growth mindset. It's a, it's a way to turn something negative into something positive because it's going to happen. You know, sometimes things are going to go sideways. This is a way to make the best of it. You know, I'll have a good story. You know, I like as it. long as long as I survive what I'm in, <laughs> then I'll have a good story. It has a Not good somebody ring to else. It. it has a good ring to it. The thing I don't like about that specific quote is it really only works when you're having a bad time, right? Yeah. Better to have a good, good, better to have a good story than a good time. Because I actually, in the moment, if things aren't going bad, I do want to have, be having a good time. And I want to be able to stop and be like, oh, I do want to have a good time. This isn't just about preparing for something. You know, we've been talking about this quite a bit, about this, this idea of we've been really results oriented for our entire lives and our careers. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we talked about it in 
the book of mythicality a little bit, there was things like pick a direction and go, and there was stop and celebrate. And we kind of touched it this different ways to tease out the idea of it's not just about the destination. It's also about the journey. And we're trying to figure that out. Like with the show that we're working on right now, which is the thing that we are most passionate about creatively, mm -hmm. the amount of time that we're going to spend making it right. is going to be so much larger than the amount of time that it ends up being, a, you know, than the runtime of the thing. Right. And then also the whatever the feeling that we get from like once it's given to the world, first of all, if we're waiting to see how people respond to it and we're relying on there being a net positive response to it in order to feel some sort of satisfaction, then we're just setting ourselves up for disappointment because what if everybody hates it? But what if what if everybody hates it, but we loved everything about the process and everything that we put into it, We and we loved the process and we loved the product, and then nobody else liked it, it still should be, that's, it's still a beautiful thing, right? Yes. You know, I think we can have our cake and eat it too, because I believe the way that we're crafting this series is that we are, it's a, re, we are crafting rewarding experiences for us to have. We're crafting legitimate questions for us to explore that I will say in the loosest sense of the verb, we're documenting that process, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of a, the, the, the product is going to be a memorial and a representation of the experience we had, the things that we actually learned, and the way that we uh, reflected or grew or, I don't know, fill in the blank, uh, enriched our, our friendship. So I think I will enjoy watching it back because for those reasons. It's a way to... Also remember, it's just like a wedding video. Like you don't get married for the wedding video. <laughs> right. I mean, you shouldn't. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think some people might actually, the more I think about it, but don't get married for <laughs> the wedding video. However, you really should have the best possible wedding video that you can because you will go back to it and you will watch it. Will you though? If it's good. Um, will you though? I well, have I have you done that? Um, yeah, I mean, not recently, but Jesse and I have like gone back and watched elements of our of our wedding video. Now, I have not done that because uh, the guy who was filming our you wedding, had, you had a little trouble. Did, um, there was no. He missed a lot of it. Well, the battery ran out before the ceremony started. And somehow he didn't know this. I'm sorry to bring up a sore subject. If I had remembered that, I wouldn't have brought this uh, this example. Yeah. Up. You don't get you don't graduate for the graduation video. Though I think wedding is actually better. But anyway, my, by the way, my mom reminded me that you were the videographer for her wedding to Lewis. Oh, okay. you don't remember this either. I, I have my you know my memory is pretty bad unless unless I take a video that I, then I watch again. I, did, I haven't watched this. I'm sure I did some awesome slow zooms. Well, I'm looking for it because she wants it. Oh. And she was thinking maybe I have a copy of it, you know. I do not remember doing this. I didn't remember you doing it either, but Christy remembered, and Mom definitely remembered. Well, I'm sure they're. I'm sure they're right. I, Christy I, was pregnant, um, with Lily. We sung a song in her wedding ceremony. You and Christy. Yeah, and apparently you were there, being all tall, operating a camera in the back. The human tripod. But you know, now my mom was talking to me. You know, she was like, "Oh, here we are talking about." I mean, it's another element of loss. Hey, like it's part of life, man. It's part of this episode too. Yeah, you know, she was like, "You know, I just want to hear Lewis's voice," and I realized that I had one video, and I wanted to see if I had. And I wanted to get the wedding video, just so I could hear his voice again, which is, you know. So she a didn't, moving request. She didn't have like videos on her phone of, of him talking. She I, she didn't take me to videos, but like last night I went through like all the videos on my phone. Okay, you know, for the past decade or so, and uh, a little over a decade, 
And you know, now you're able to search by somebody's like name and face, and then you can just bloop, there's all the images. And some of them, and it even searched the videos. It, like it, it, yeah. it scrubs the videos now. Right. So uh, it pulled those up. So I had a few that well, I'm, that's gonna, good. I'm gonna be able to send her that I, th I think will be nice. Um, what were you talking about? We were talking about. You don't get married for the wedding. Oh, you video, don't get. But you should okay. make a great wedding video, but you get married. You also don't get married for the wedding. <laughs> you get married to begin the, the relationship. But I do think that when we watch the videos that we're making, um, much more so than would, when you think about an episode of Good Mythical Morning, which literally, like, kind of what you're seeing is what happened. Right. Everything that goes, I mean, there's behind the scenes stuff, but like you're kind of seeing this real time unfolding of the things that we were doing or eating or whatever. Uh, and I don't go back and watch those for that reason. I was there and watching it back is like just being there again. But these videos are like, each one is, you know, days of our time of actually doing the stuff, but months of our time of planning and all this stuff that this all the things that we're thinking about and all the conversations that we're having together and with the team and then you see this final product and it just represents so much time of per, it's, so, it's so personal to us it's funny because it reminds me of a video i watched recently and it was a guy and he was sitting there with a piece of art uh, and it just kind of looked like a piece of junk, but as he kind of brought it close to the camera, he was like, I've been working on this for years, and it was like all these like metal pieces and wires and spirals, and then there was like all these interesting like stones and jewels kind of put into it. It was almost just like just a intricate piece of metal art that had jewels all over it. Okay. And he was like, I have spent years on this and I'm putting it on TikTok shop and I'm listing it for $150,000. <laughs> what? And all the comments were like, Keep yeah, uh, you're going to enjoy this for a long time. Like, you're <laughs> not going to sell this for $150,000. Yeah. But it was interesting because what was happening in his mind, and I don't know what the status of it at this point, but what was happening in his mind is he was like, when I look at this thing, I think about all the time that I put into it. I think about all the care that I put into it. And one of the ways that I've captured up all the time and the care and the talent, I mean, he's got a talent to do this thing, is in this object. But when you look at it. When I look at it, I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care about the time and the talent that you put it. Is that, that what's gonna happen that. with our show? No, but it matters to him. That's what I'm saying. So. Is that good enough for us? I think it should be. If you're yeah. if you're healthy, it should be, right? Like the healthier you are, the more that simply the value that you place into the thing that you've created is where it is the true value of it. Now, if that guy's business and livelihood depended on him selling that thing for something that made sense of the hours that he put into it, yeah, that is the complicating factor that we're doing this creative exercise in the context of a business model that needs to like pay people's salaries. Mm -hmm. So we hope that it works. But it should be more so that we could do more of it, not so that we will feel some sort of validation because people like it. Right. Speaking of which, you should sell that shirt. Oh, yeah. There, many, many hours went into the creation of this this shirt that we are selling at mythical.com for $150,000. <laughs> <laughs> Now the beauty of this shirt is that there's more than one. Now there are a limited quantity and in a variety of sizes. It's called the Gentle Giants shirt because it's giraffes. As you can see, there is a- They're a gentle giant. There's a red giraffe with a very specific and custom giraffe pattern. You're gonna have to- On his neck? You're gonna have to see it to, to understand it. And then a link that has a very specific giraffe pattern. Both of those patterns tie into things that we both hold dear. Get yours at mythical.com. Gentle Giant. If you or someone you love likes giraffes, my wife's favorite animal is a giraffe. It at times is my favorite favorite animal. I oscillate. Between? Uh, I'm a big fan of gorillas. Really? I always say tigers, but I don't. I haven't really put a lot of thought into it. They are beautiful, though. They're beautiful. That's a beautiful animal. Solitary. 
lethal. Love to watch a cat move, man. Ear Biscuits is supported by Indeed. When you're hiring, it feels amazing to finally close out a job search, but what if you could get rid of the search and just match? You can with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors according to Indeed data and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to the other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. We've been fortunate enough to build a company where people actually wanna work here. Lots of people wanna work at Mythical, and we're always trying to do new things that need people with specialized skills and Indeed provides a way of matching what we're asking for with the person who can do that very particular thing. Join more than three and a half million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. You can get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash ears. That's with an S, huh? Yeah. yeah. Ears, just go to indeed.com slash ears right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash ears, terms and conditions apply. Need to hire, you need Indeed. Ear Biscuits is supported by Butcher Box. I grilled out my Butcher Box meats two nights ago actually. Uh, my most recent batch, got some ribeye steaks and some, uh, some, some little chicken fingers. Oh, you did two meats? I did two meats. Wow, yep. a little buffet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was nice. And then we were eating it, Christian was like, this is a good steak. If that's this not is an, a good steak. If that's not an endorsement, I don't know what is. Butcher Box meat is 100% grass-fed beef, free-range organic chicken, pork-raised, crate-free, and wild-caught seafood, humanely raised, no antibiotics or added hormones. And who doesn't like less trips to the grocery store, plus, Less thought about what you're gonna cook with their curated tips and recipes based on your box so it takes all the guesswork out of dinner. And where else can you get free protein for a whole year? Butcher Box prices are hard to find at the grocery store so it's a great value. With Butcher Box, you don't have to worry about what's for dinner. Butcher Box is offering you their choice of a weeknight meal essential. Three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a whole year. Plus get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com slash ear and use code ear to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Ear Biscuits is supported by NetSuite. We're content creators, but we're also business owners and a lot goes into that. If you're a small business owner, it might seem obvious that the less your business spends on operations, delivering your product or service, the more margin you have and the more money you keep. But with higher expenses on materials, employees, distribution, and borrowing, everything costs more. So to reduce costs and headaches, smart businesses are graduating to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system bringing accounting, financial management, inventory, HR into one platform and one source of truth. With NetSuite, you reduce IT costs because NetSuite lives in the cloud with no hardware required, access from anywhere. You can cut the cost of maintaining multiple systems because you got one unified business management suite. You improve efficiency by bringing all your major business processes into one platform, slashing manual tasks and errors. Over 37,000 companies have already made the move, so do the math. See how you'll profit with NetSuite. Yeah, boosting costs, cutting performance, that's what the CEO in me likes to hear. You said boosting costs and cutting performance. <laughs> <laughs> well, I meant to say the opposite, because I'm a, I'm a co-CEO. You did, that was good, you did the yeah, co-CEO right. thing. That's why there's two of us. Making sure. <laughs> All right, now through April 15th, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. Head to netsuite.com slash ear. netsuite.com slash ear. netsuite.com slash ear. All right, so what do you, how are we gonna do this? You're gonna. I'm just gonna read some of them. You're gonna see. read some. Good strikes your Some fans. famous last words. And uh, let's see what, let's see what it, let's see how we take it. Now, when you get information off of the internet, um, sometimes it's made up. A lot of times it's made up. 
But mental floss tends to be a pretty reliable source in my experience. So I think there is like a okay. 84% confidence that these are all true. Okay. Starting with Joseph Wright. I don't even know who this is. Well, when you find out who he is and what he did, this becomes fitting. He was a linguist who edited the English dialect dictionary, and his last words were, dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> his last word was dictionary? Dictionary. That's one word. Yeah, it was really What were the words that led up to dictionary? We don't know. Dictionary. I can't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> Dictionary. <laughs> but just think about it. If you have one thing, one indelible mark that you want to leave on the world and you believe that it is the fact that you edited the English dialect dictionary, we're talking about him right now. And the only reason we're talking about him is because his last word was dictionary. dictionary. It worked. I think this may be my my word too. Well, <laughs> <laughs> like I want yeah. This is what I want people to say about me. Was he a linguist? Well, not really. Uh, was did somebody else have that as their last word? Yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah. was a linguist, and he did a podcast once. So about he it. stole somebody else's last word. Yeah, but it was dictionary. I mean, if it ain't broke, <laughs> don't fix it. <laughs> dictionary. <laughs> yeah. All right, that's my that's mine right now. Well, I think Raphael, you know, Italian artist, Nadal, not not, not a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Oh. Uh, his last word was happy. The first two just start as one word. Yeah, I I, I want some sentences. Well, we'll get. We, there's 65 of them. Happy, happy. Like, I actually also get to people that I actually know. You know Raphael. Okay. Yeah, I guess. Um, Ninja Turtle. Ha that's a good word. I think that might be my my last word. Because you want to leave those that you're leaving behind with a positive sentiment, like happy. That's good. That's a good one. And do you, well, okay, interesting that that's how you interpreted it. You interpreted it as him saying happy for the sake of the people around him, or do you think he saw something? Maybe he was, he, it made happy. I like to think he was happy. like the veil was being lifted. And he was merging with the greater consciousness, and he was happy. I think it. I think yours is going to be what when you went under the anesthesia for the colonoscopy. No, no, no I'm not going to talk about bowels. No, you were like, ah, it was like you were going down a hole. <laughs> ah! I also said, oh shit, at one point. That could, I'm sure, oh shit, has been a lot of people's last words. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, you don't know this guy, but because it's one word, I want to wrap up the one word. Um, right. Composer Gustav Mahler, he died in bed conducting an imaginary orchestra, mm -hmm. and his last word was Mozart. <laughs> <clears throat> Why do you yell Mozart when you're conducting an orchestra? I don't know. That's that was his idol. That's who he wanted to be. Maybe he always felt like he was always just chasing after the you know to be as good as Mozart. Or maybe they were moving from one song to another. It was like now we're gonna do Mozart. Okay, I'm gonna. Or find is it somebody. Mozart? Uh, I always say Mozart. Yeah. Now you know, uh, old blue eyes. Sinatra. Sinatra. What? What's the? What's his last word? Dictionary. I'm losing. <laughs> I'm losing, baby. It was just, I'm losing. I think that that was half of a sentence. I'm losing life. I'm losing no, consciousness. I'm losing. Period. Quote. I mean, that's I'm losing the, this battle. He he ultimately lost. And what did he die of? Don't we all? Because that's a good question. If he was dying of, uh, you know, a, a sword fight. Maybe. Maybe it was a duel of some sort. It was a heart attack. Oh, it was a heart attack. Okay. Okay, but apparently it was a... It, Maybe it was a competition to live. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, he was, it was 1998. So maybe he, maybe he had the heart attack and then didn't, you know, 
didn't immediately die and basically was able to process the fact that I'm losing. Like I'm, I'm, this is all the, all, like, that's one way of seeing it. That just show, goes to show you that if he was truly talking about, I'm losing, like I've come, I've lost the ultimate battle. He wasn't happy. Well, you could lose and be happy. I do it all the time. On our show. All right, next. George Orwell. You know, okay. Who wrote 1984, famously. Mm -hmm. uh, these are his last written words, which well, kind of feels like a cop You got to tell us now. Uh, I didn't see that until I got here. At 50, everyone has the face he deserves. <laughs> okay. Wow. His real name was Eric Arthur Blair, and he died at the age of 46, which is... Oh, that's that, ironic. That That's how old I am at the moment. So he didn't have the face he deserved. He never got it. At 50, everyone has the face he deserves. Huh. Do you, do you understand that? Does that just mean that... I like, guess you're aging, and like this is what you're... This is what you've earned... Okay. I don't know. He didn't make it, though. He lost. I'm skipping over people that you're going to be like, who's that? Good. Uh, Nostradamus. I know who that is. He can tell the future. He's Which a philosopher. This seems, now this start, this might be in the, the estimated 16% of last words that are not true. Be cautionary about AI. How about that? He said, "Don't." What? Well, okay, go ahead. Tomorrow at sunrise, I shall no longer be here. <laughs> and then he died. He's got a sense of humor. So you think that he knew that he was a man of predictions, and so <laughs> I think he did know that he was like, "I'm gonna, I'm gonna die." Now a lot he of people, planned this. A lot of he, people. He know wrote that, this though. on his palm. A lot of people <laughs> seem to know when they are on the way out. Yeah. Right, exactly. The writing's on the wall, dude. And also, he's reading his hand. Uh, tomorrow at dawn, I will no longer be here. Yep, yep. Now, this I mean, one's interesting. People's, people's, doctors say that about people all the time. And raises a question. He's not going to make it through the night. This raises a question about what our state of mind might be, and I'll explain in a second. So Herman Melville, writer of Moby, Moby Dick, Dick, died saying... God bless Captain Veer, referencing his then unpublished novel, Billy Budd, which was found in a bread box after he died. So this man died with the story that he was immersed in mm -hmm. oh, on his mind. Yeah. Like that was the thing he was thinking about. He died working. He died working. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a not insignificant chance that we will die working. Yeah. If you could call it that. I mean, we had to take out new insurance policies just because of some of the decisions that we're making about this uh, <laughs> new show we're doing. Oh, gosh. we That's true. Uh, <laughs> huh. You know what I'm saying? Ain't that right, Jenna? It, it was, it w we did it. It was complicated. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have to get a blood sample, though. Uh, no, but you know, taking out uh, an insurance. Yeah, taking out an insurance policy for the two. Founders of a company who are going to do something um, risky was uh, was a thing we did. We what, what was the price tag on that? It's a, a lot. I don't know. It was. It was. Um, it, it tens of thousands of dollars. It was. It was. Or hundred. It wasn't a hundred grand. No, 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 no. I don't remember no. the because we we talked it down a little bit, so it was. Um, it's around it's around five five digits. Yeah, I'll say it's it's a five digit. But here's Low, the thing. lower on the that's fives. For, that's for each or both. Both. Okay, good. Lower on the fives. I looked up, and that's just for the duration of this just excursion. That, that day. That is just for the yeah the for, one day. We we are insured for that one day. Doing that one activity. Well, we are insured in general. Yeah. Right. But you are insured for that additional... one activity additionally. <laughs> Right, because our typical your typical life insurance doesn't cover you doing the type of thing that we're going to be doing. I think. I don't um, think it is. Well, yes, but not when it's being filmed oh. for 
something. Okay. okay. So. Well, I looked up the and odds and on also this. one of the crew members. I can't. I got uh, is. They're not doing the same thing you're doing, but because they're going to be in the area, we also had to get for one of the crew members. I can't say further without giving it all away. I don't want to do that. Yeah. No, cancel that. Cancel cancel the crew members' insurance? Yeah, we don't care about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Surprise, for, it's mine. For no, us, it it's something that, like, or the equipment. Like, we also had to insure all the equipment as well. We had to it insure, wasn't just you all. We had to insure a crew member. We had to insure a crew for member. For that crew member's, like, for the benefit of their beneficiaries or for our benefit? Well, I'll say it. <laughs> I'll say it and we can bleep it out if you want. Because <laughs> it's. Yeah. It's because he's in oh, you all. Oh, I know that. So if the. I know that. If something part, where it happens but... to the. And he's um, under contract with us. So it's also to help us because. We are paying that crew member for that time, so oh. we need to make sure that our insurance, because we have insurance for all crew, but we need to make sure that this this is outside of the crew member's normal scope of activities. The fatality rate is very, very low. In fact, based on my calculations, it is more likely that we are seriously injured or die while driving to go do the thing. Well, I'm sure that's what do. they say. Well, that's what the studies show. Yes, yeah, one, the, that is me, true. Let's mm. move on. <laughs> I don't want to... Th the, the way that I deal with this is by not thinking about it, not by getting more information about it. <laughs> um, Marie Antoinette, uh, who, you know, was famously executed okay. via guillotine. All right, so right before the blade comes down... Well, you're making it a little... No, it wasn't quite that dramatic because... She stepped on her executioner's foot on her way to the guillotine, and her last words were, pardonnez-moi, monsieur. <laughs> How polite. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So she maintained her composure to the very end. Hmm. All right. Give me another. Oh, okay, here we go. Isaac Newton, man of science, man of faith. All right. Okay. Men of gravitas. Your 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 desire for there to be a longer. He made a speech. More than one word. Here we go. I don't know what I may seem to the world, but as to myself, I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the seashore and diverting myself now and then and finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than the ordinary, whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. Wow, I can get I can get behind that guy. So thing. people, he knew that people thought highly of him and his discoveries, and he had a very humble ending. Like, hey, I'm just, I'm just over here scratching for rocks. That's nice. That's nice. He had he had a he had a like a nice perspective, and he yeah. seemed to recognize, and he was ready to the, give a speech on his way out. Well. One of the things I've observed about people who live back in the day, at least as you like see them, you hear the writings, but also anytime they're portrayed in any kind of movie, yeah, you're like, do these people really talk this way? Like, the eloquence was off the charts, and the word, tr the the vocabulary was off the charts, and obviously not for everybody, but like people of a certain right, like status. Yeah. Just didn't say things that sounded informal. Like, Communication was an art form. Right. And so certainly written, but also spoken. I like to think probably. this was off the cuff is what I'm saying. I, I don't I don't think Maybe. he was like, I've got this thing ready to go in my back pocket that I'm gonna whip out right before I die. I like to think that this is just how this man spoke. You don't think it was a statement disseminated Disseminated through PR. I to, mean, it, maybe it was. To uh, TMZ. Uh, somebody you can really relate to here, Link, Leonardo da Vinci. You once played him in a rap song. Okay. Uh, 
He said, I have offended God and mankind because my work did not reach the quality it should have. <laughs> wow, a true artist. No, I'm well a perfectionist. I, I mean, Poor guy. I mean, I, yeah, tortured. Offended God? He has offended God and mankind because he did not get to where he wanted to get. Like, That's, that, that one, the tenor of that is sad versus what Newton had to say, you know? Right, but don't you have to be a little bit I mean, this is the constant. This is the constant question, right? Doesn't this level of unhealthiness? It do, doesn't it lead to people doing things like Da Vinci did? Because if he Maybe. was healthier, he would have been like, "Why am I doing this? I'm gonna like have a coffee." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Have a I'm gonna take a nap. <laughs> <For> right? <real. laughs> Poor guy. I feel for him. Okay. Let's see here. Lots of people I don't recognize. Okay, Benjamin Franklin, I recognize him. Okay. And was there all, were always people like writing down what these famous people said when they were dying? I mean, well, I guess. Well, specifically, that question is answered about Benjamin Franklin. Uh, as Benjamin Franklin lay dying at the age of 84, his daughter told him to change position in bed so he could breathe more easily. Franklin's last words were, a dying man can do nothing easy. <laughs> Dying man can do nothing easy. Yeah, that that's that's very practical. It's very in the moment. I didn't think he knew he, he was going. He knew he was dying at some point. He, he called himself a dying man, of course. W.C. Field. The one with the cigar. Yeah, actor and comedian. His last words, God damn the whole friggin' world and everyone in it but you, Carlotta. <laughs> <laughs> Carlotta. Speaking to Carlotta Monty, his longtime mistress. Okay. Wow. So I guess she was there. Going out with a bang. God damn the whole friggin' world and everyone in it but you. That doesn't sound like a pleasant man to be around. Those old school... Uh, yeah, comedians. Unless you're and Carletta, actors, man. They were. I was uh, listening to Judd Apatow talk about um, Jerry Lewis. Apparently, there's a there's a book about Jerry Lewis that I, it, it was designed to be a biography, and the guy like showed up to begin interviewing Jerry Lewis, like you know, late in his life, and he was like just famously difficult. Okay. And he ended up being so difficult that the guy just wrote the, the biography about how difficult he was. <laughs> and it's like this, apparently a really entertaining book because he was just such a egomaniac. Well, you don't want to, you don't want to, I, I don't want to be that way. I don't want to be grumpy at the end. You know, I want to be peaceful, you know? Hmm. I want to be mm. chill. I don't want to be grumps. You know, if if I'm fortunate enough to live into my old age, I have the right to be grumpy, but I don't want to be, you know? That sounds like you might have to be actively uh, thinking about that. <laughs> you want to be placid, yeah. Speaking of not grumpy, Michael Landon. Okay. Little House on a Prairie. Touched by an angel. Highway to Heaven. Oh, Highway to Heaven, yeah. <laughs> he was the angel. Um, he famously died of cancer in 1991. Everybody was sad because everybody loved him. His family had gathered around his bed and his son said it was time to move on. And Landon said, you're right, it's time. I love you all. And that was it. You're right, it's time, I love you all. That's nice. That's a good way to go out. That's a good way to, to go out. To basically be man. released. Is there anybody like more modern and cool that died? Um, how about John Wayne? <laughs> All right, no, Pilgrim. No, no. Um, I mean, yes, this article is from this year, but uh, you know, what did I, he say? He said, uh, "Of course, I know who you are. You're my girl. I love you." To his wife, at least he didn't say it to his mistress. <laughs> he said it to his wife. Of course, I know who you are. So apparently, he was answering the question. Do you know who, you know I, who am? I am? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're like we're like Sherlock Holmes over here. 
um, Ernest Hemingway. Okay. Uh, who I know he wrote stuff that he, I haven't read. He unalived himself. Uh, he told his wife, Mary, good night, my kitten. <laughs> my kitten. See, that's, talk about language. You know, uh, I think I'm gonna start calling my wife my kitten. I yeah, because you because you were talking about how you didn't have a uh, pet name a pet name for her. I'm gonna try it on for size this afternoon when I see her. Kitten, hello, my kitten, my kitten. How do you think she'll respond to that? <laughs> uh, with a crinkled brow and a chuckle, and then she'll ascend up the chimney to deliver presents elsewhere. Um. Uh, not ultimately positive is how she would respond. Well, okay, what if you tried something else that was a little no, bit more? No, that's what I, come my kitten, let's, yeah, she's not, let's if, dine together. If you know she's not going to like kitten, <laughs> then why are you going to go for it? Um, yeah, I, I need something. My boo-boo, my boo-boo? I don't know. Do you have a way, like, is there another, I mean, Christy is already, it already has a Y at the end of it, like Jesse has at the end of it. Sometimes you'll add an E sound at the end of somebody's name to make it sound more endearing, but when they already have that name, like Linky, well, you mm -hmm. can't say Christy E, you know, it doesn't make any, Ready. Christy Gator. Christ. <laughs> Christy Gator? My short neck <laughs> giraffe. How about that? She likes giraffes. Uh, yeah, I feel like you got, you know, you need to spend some time working on that along with my your last kitten. words. My kitten. <laughs> um, this is a great uh, one. It's Groucho Marx. Sense of humor. Bring it. <laughs> whose last words were, this is no way to live. <laughs> <laughs> you know he was saving that one up. He was saving that up. Now... His yeah. brother, Chico Marx, not quite as popular. You know, the Marx brothers. Yeah. I didn't know his name was Chico. Uh, they, they started uh, communism. Um, um. Them and their other brother, Carl. <laughs> uh, he said, remember, honey, don't forget what I told you. Put my coffin, put in my coffin a deck of cards, a mashy niblick, and a pretty blonde... It's not a sarcophagus, man. This isn't like an Egyptian tomb. You don't get to like fill it full of stuff for the afterlife. A mashy niblick is a... You could. Golf club. I guess you could. I mean, not... I wouldn't, you know, put a person in there. Yeah. Another, a blonde? Know. Yeah. What is a flashy niblick? A golf club. Oh. <laughs> he, wanted to, he wanted to, you know... Play golf with a blonde. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock. One never knows the ending. One has to die to know exactly what happens after death. Although Catholics have their hopes. <laughs> he shouldn't have added that. He shouldn't have added the Catholic part. It would have been better without it. You know? He should have edited himself. <laughs> like his films. Pete Maravich. Um, famous the, basketball player who's... To some people. Who's, uh, well, to people who know basketball. His dad, Press Maravich, started Campbell Basketball Camp in Bowie's Creek, North Carolina, where yours truly and you mm -hmm. grew up. Did you know that his dad started that? It's a very successful basketball. It was like one of the, the first one of the first ones in the nation or something? And they would say things like that, yeah. I met Vinny Del Negro there. Okay. All right. J.R. Reed. Uh, I also got into my one of my another fight. I got into another fight there. I forget about the fight that I got into there. What happened? Just a couple of punches. To like the body, you know, like body punches, like it didn't really resolve. Against wow. a guy named Brett McLaughlin. Really? Yeah. I met my I met my like mirror image. You were threatened by his name being so close to yours? He was an asshole. Hey man, change your name. Did he punch you too? Mm-hmm. Where? Body. We weren't fighters, you know. Did it hurt? It was one of those things no. And I didn't hurt him either. It was one of those things that like you're kind of like fighting a little bit, but like you don't really want to do damage to yourself or your hands. So I, that's why I forget about it because it wasn't much of a fight. Meanwhile, Zach and I were not attendees at the basketball camp and we were rummaging through the unlocked dorm rooms 
that uh, all of the campers stayed in. Just like me- we didn't steal stuff; we just messed with people's stuff. Give me an example of messing: shaving cream and shoes. Oh, that's 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 pretty bad. Oh, that's horrible, huh? What else? You know, finding some 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 dirty mags. Found a couple of those. And left them? Put some shaving cream in them. <laughs> well, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> well, what Pete Never Mar- got caught. Pete Maravich, which there's a there's a uh, really entertaining uh, YouTube video of him. If you just type in uh, Pete Maravich horse. What? H- horse, as in the basketball game, not like oh. on a horse. <laughs> <laughs> and um, which is spelled the same way. But there was a televised game, like one-on-one game of horse that they These would were use, different times. They would use professional basketball players playing horse against each other and broadcast it. Okay. And, you know, he was known for all these crazy moves, and so some of the stuff they're doing is just... Okay, I'm like a, what kids would do, where it's like I'm gonna bounce this one I'm gonna, off the ceiling after going around my. His were more like legs. Y- you gotta, uh, you gotta go under the basket while do while putting the ball around your waist and then throw it over your head and go in and like they would be like he could kind of talk it out and do it. Why isn't this like his part part of the All Star game? It should be. It's way. It would be way better than the skills challenge. I watched a little bit of the All Star festivities this year. Yeah. Um, yeah, the skills challenge. Even the game isn't that entertaining anymore. The dunk contest is okay, but there's that guy, Mac McClung, who's the guy that's in the G League that is actually not even in the in the NBA. He comes over and gets to be a part of it. But he's like so much more creative in the way that he approaches his dunks. But then you've got these old, old heads who are judging it, and they don't, like, their judging is so completely bonkers. Like, they don't, they don't, I don't think they can actually see what's happening or know what's significant about the dunks. Like, yeah. You really need to like watch a dunk in slow motion and be like, oh, oh, that's what he did, and that's why this is significant. But anyway. But they need to play horse. I digress. Pete Maravich collapsed during a pickup game. He had that thing where you've got like uh, a hole in your heart and you don't know about it. Oh. Oh. Um, and so he's like in great shape. And I never had experienced any problems. His last words were, I feel great. <laughs> Why <do> you laugh? <laughs> it's ironic. It was a joke. Well, I guess it wasn't a joke. It could have been a joke. All right. You getting bored? I'm getting, no, I just want you to pick some good ones. Um, well, okay, okay. Winston Churchill said, I'm bored with it all. Me too. I mean this these last words. Emily Dickinson. She was she had she had a lot of good words. Mm-hmm. Uh she said I a lot must, of pressure for I, a writer. I must go in for the fog is rising. I think but she was already in. Wow. This is happening in a book. I must go in for the fog is rising. She's a somber lady. Yeah. James Brown. Here we go. Now, he could say, I feel good, and that would have been better than Pistol Pete saying it. He said, I'm going away tonight. (laughs) Oh, he's like Nostradamus. Hey! Hey, I'm going away tonight! (laughs) I got two more for you, Link. You You know this one. Steve Jobs. Yep. His last words were, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's cool. See, I think he was on something. I think he was seeing something. (laughs) I think he was seeing something. And finally. That's nice. It's kind of like propelling you into the next phase. uh, Elvis Presley, you heard of him? A little bit, yeah. Died on the toilet. Which... Is fitting because his last words were, I'm going to the bathroom to read. <laughs> That's funny. Was he joking? No. He and m- by read, he meant? He went to the bathroom to read and 
Never came out. How's that make you feel? Um, Do you feel like you have something to work with? Now? I don't. I don't think anybody's going to be quoting me. You'll well, be, with that attitude, of course not. You'll be gone. <laughs> I didn't remember what I was going to say. I, Did, for, I mean, I forgot I mean, what I was going to say. Is actually, it would be pretty, pretty memorable, and very much something the kind of thing you would say. Right. <laughs> I should have planned something for this moment. It was also good. Yeah. What are you going to say? Oh, I don't. I haven't thought of it. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna wing it. No, you're not a winger. You're gonna plan it. Come on. Oh, I'm not gonna plan it yet. I can't. I can't even come up with my mantra yet. <laughs> I know you can't. All right, it's my wreck, baby wreck, baby one, two, three, four. I'm gonna give you some music. When I was in New Zealand, I was like, you know, I'm gonna listen to some Kiwi artists, huh. and um, I found a band. Uh, I don't know if it's just this vocalist, but um, she's got a very soothing voice. The band is called Tiny Ruins. And it it's not that she has like a Kiwi accent or anything, but um, uh, I just recommend it. It's really, it's, it's really good, man. It's just, How it's a good vibe. It? You, um, singer, songwriter, indie, um, it was perfect for driving around the beautiful landscapes of the North Island, the pastoral nature of it all. So yeah, um, check out Tiny Ruins. It's a band, there's four of them. Um, Me at the Museum, You in the Winter Garden is the most popular uh, song of theirs. And I think you'll like it. Number number of albums. Uh, yeah, I think you'd be into it. So check it out. Well, Tiny Ruins, you'll like them. There you go. Uh, thank you for spending some time with us. Hopefully we didn't uh, depress you too much. Maybe you developed a plan for what you're going to say as your last words. Mm-hmm. Um, in the meantime, remember that we want to hear from you via voicemail. Call our number, let us know anything at all that you want to let us know, any question that you have, any comment that you have. one 888 one We'll speak at you next week. Hi, Red and Link. I've been listening to you guys for a long time, and I was just listening to your most recent Ear Biscuits episode about uh, where Red talks about his how his anxiety is and I just want to say I really appreciate how you guys talk so openly about your mental health journey uh, especially when it comes to anxiety and it means a lot to see two grown adult men somewhat successful that are still struggling with these issues is encouraging so keep up the good work 